Are you a business owner looking for real advice and input? You're in the right place. From concept to launch to growth, funding and beyond. Welcome to Startup Hustle with your hosts. One once sold a business for $150 million. The other, the author of Million Dollar Bedroom. Here are your hosts of Startup Hustle, Matt DeCourcy and Matt Watson. And we're back. Another episode of Startup Hustle. Matt DeCourcy here with Matt Watson. Hi, Matt. What's going on, man? I'm just, uh, it's hot, sticky outside, thirsty. I've got some new demands. Thirsty. For my tour bus. Dude, I'm tired of the demands in the I know. tour bus. I want some more, I want some soda in it. Are you thirsty too? Yeah. I want some soda, like mango soda. Man, what a, what amazing timing on fulfilling your needs because <laughs> we just happen to have luke thompson here the owner of the casey soda company hi luke how's it going How, do you just happen to also have like a mango drink for watson i had no idea you had a mango oh yeah it's need. almost like a fetish it's weird because we i mean with all the flavors we had i just wanted to bring something different so i'm yeah. glad that well we appreciate mango that mango was yeah. what we wanted and, and we appreciate you coming in and you know we've really been trying to branch out and and have different types of entrepreneurs here we love to highlight kansas city's finest and why not bring the soda company That's right. in, man? The finest so, soda yeah, here we are you you are uh, our only soda founder so far so i'm looking forward to this and I, dude i honestly am thirsty yeah so um, well, first off, Luke, how the hell do you start a soda company? Um, I get that question like every day at the store. I bet. <laughs> yeah, I bet. People come in and they're like, why did you do this? Yeah, uh, why did you do it? Um, I was inspired for a couple reasons. Um, I wanted to open a store that was special, that was unique. And with retail, it gets to the point where you try and open something and Amazon's going to just come in and mm, they're going to, sure. you know, beat you by price or, or it's just a bunch of franchises just of the a bunch same of franchises crap over exactly. and over. Right. Um, so I've been researching for years and there was a store called Galco's in Los Angeles, which started doing this about 20 years ago. They were a grocery store who was getting kind of beat around by Coke and Pepsi. And this guy decided his name's John Neese. He decided that I'm just going to bring in a bunch of craft soda makers. And what started as kind of a project took over his grocery store, and he converted the grocery store to just soda. Wow. Um, and that kind of inspired me, as well as a, a place in Oklahoma City off Route 66 called Pops. Um, it was built by an oil tycoon. Um, he's a billionaire. Is it so T Boone Pickens? It or wasn't T Boone. It was. Oh, it was another oil billionaire. It was from one of those Oklahoma. other. <laughs> Sorry, there's so many. Um, I can't remember his name, but he was he was part owner of the Thunder as well. Um, so he had some money to throw around at it, and he built this architectural gym in the middle of nowhere, Arcadia, Oklahoma, that's just dedicated to pop. Um, and so he has. It, it's really a, a landmark. There's a 66 foot tall pop bottle outside that's wow, LED, nice. uh, and he's made it a destination. Again, I'm not a billionaire, so I don't have the money to. Not give, yet. Give, give not it time. Yet. Yeah, to give it time. Here we give go. It time. A building like that. We'll determine whether or not you're going to be a billionaire when we try these right. this Luke. Leave it up to us. So based on, <laughs> we those control two your stores, destiny right here. <laughs> yeah, those two stores doing well. It showed to me that there was at least a market for a unique store like that. Um, there's nothing around us pr for probably until you get to Pops that is competition. So it was also protected from, you know, somebody coming in. And, I mean, when I think of soda, I think of, of course, like Coke and Pepsi right. and all the brands they own. And the right. only other thing I really think of is like Jones Soda. Right. Jones is, is one of the larger craft ma independently owned craft makers. Outside um, of that, no idea. So a lot of these places, once you start researching, you find that there's hundreds of brands out there thousands of varieties but they're only bottled and sold in their little region yeah Maybe well, let's, like talk, let's talk about that because i've got some notes here that said you guys carry a, a, and rotate through a variety of 1800 yeah. types of soda yeah that's what we're up to dude now. i didn't re okay this is that moment where you didn't even realize there was that many of something 
And then, then I would probably advise you not to do that. Dude, to do what? It's too many products. Well, no, but they rotate them through. You want to mix. Still, you want to mix. That's a lot of. Yeah. That's out. a lot of skews. That is that's a true. ton of skews. That's a lot of skews. Yeah, it's that's a challenge. But in if the you're in, if you're into like soda pop and just things being different, yeah, is it soda pop or cola? I I consider it to be whatever you're gonna pay me. You know, <laughs> if you come in and say I, I like this, I like this guy. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. You can buy some pop. Um, to soda. Me, I want some soda. To me, pop I, has the. I say pop. I say soda yeah. pop a lot. I think that is that in, like the, a in the Philippines. Thing? It's called co. 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 Yeah. Po- pop to me is like cheap, like can Coke and Pepsi, and then uh, like what I sell is soda because ah, it's premium. So, so do you make your own, or the, is what you brought today? And we'll try some of this in a minute because what every podcast needs is a visual. It's a visual tasting. <laughs> We were talking about the things that like people don't translate well. Like, here's our taste test. Yeah. But we're well. Watson's reaction um, will definitely d- make the judge. But are, so, do you make this stuff, or are you a, are you just are, are you a purveyor of, of of the soda distributor of sorts? Right now, we are just retail and okay. a distributor. Um, we've been working on a line for the past three years. Um, so you they, guys source the we source most it. interesting flavors you can find and buy, buy a pallet of it, and then when you sell it, you sell it, yeah. and then you go on to the next flavor? Or? I prefer to buy directly from the bottlers. Um, that way, we're not paying a bunch of middlemen. We yeah. get the best price. Sure. Um, the bigger the brand, the harder it is to do that. You know, I can't go to Coke directly and pick it up at their bottler. I've I can't imagine it. that's like what you're there to sell, though. Yeah. And I mean, so I wouldn't go to your soda shop and be like, "Hey, man, can I get a?" a, get a six you don't even sell that, do you? Let me I get a sell, six pack of Pepsi. I sell way too much Coke, Pepsi, and Doctor. Uh, ah, you get how? sometimes you get customers who they just want what they know. Weird and, blasphemy. And so I try to push them and to try one that's locally made. It's or, like going to a craft brewery and having yeah, Bud Light. Right. Yeah. I agree. It so, happens. Uh, well, that's a good point. That, so take you know, their money, though. All right. So. I'm in my early 40s, maybe mid 40s, you know, it depends who you ask. And, you know, we're, we went, I remember growing up, there wasn't a wide variety of things, you know, like you had, it was very singular. And then over the last 20 years, um, I've seen like the craft brewery is, you know, it's something that's obviously become pretty substantial. And is this a, is this a similar like model, like where people are feeling a lot more bold about creating small batch products that are distributed. And like, I don't, I've never seen mango soda. In some way, I think it's, it goes hand in hand with craft brewery because a lot of the breweries will produce a soda as well as their beers. Because when kids come in to the restaurant or um, with their parents to take a tour, they can also drink soda while their parents are tasting the beer. So okay. there are a decent amount of sodas that are made by beer makers. Interesting. I guess that makes sense too. I mean, if you're in the business of, of making drinks, so we're going to try some of these and yeah. I think so we don't have to have a whole segment dedicated to trying. You do not get mango first, Matt. You get Bullshit. mango last. Oh. So well, can I have my cup? Okay. So, hey, we get to make cool noises today. No, that's Matt. That's not an attractive <sighs> noise. So, all right. Do you want to try mango first? Fine. We'll wait. Oh, he has beer. Butterscotch beer. So it's butterscotch beer in the way that it's it's technically butter beer from Harry Potter. Honey basil. Oh, but butter you, beer. Butter so beer. let's yeah, read, yeah, read yeah. them out. All right. I, I think I beer. should say you can't call it butter beer because Warner Brothers. All right. We just violated all the trademarks. It's so butter maybe beer. You just so what do you out. want to try? Well, all right. Let's just try this first. It may or may not be this butter. This may beer. or may not be a a you can't. a a a, a, uh, a Larry Porter <laughs> type reference. All right, so we just cracked the butterscotch. Okay, well, how are we gonna do this? All right, here, like, give me a splash. Yeah, give, give it both. Me a yeah, a splash. All right, yeah. so this is the butterscotch. Right, that's good. That's good. That's good. All right, it's the so butterish Scottish beer. Butterscotch beer is just butterscotch cream soda. Um, but it sells, it's one of our best selling sodas because of, dude, this is good. The thought that it may be in a certain movie produced by Warner brothers. Wow. Well, that's pretty good. And this is they're, really not, good. they're not listening. Don't worry about it. They have wizard like <laughs> fonts on the front. Yeah. They aren't listening. Nah, that's pretty good. That, that okay. Good. So we're going to, and we're going to determine what we like the best. Mm. By the way, you can go to CaseySoda.com and that's check out what Luke What does. is the cell rate? What is that? Cell rate is a New York staple. Hey, Hey, ADD. 
You what? open the mango one, and I know you oh, want it. Let's yeah, just do let's it. Give me mango. a splash of mango. All right, so we have an, uh, Matt and I own a company together called Full Scale, and we have a bunch of employees in the Philippines. The mango <clears throat> is something we have learned to appreciate due yeah. to our trips over there. Um, unbeknownst to many people, there are actually you have green mangoes and you have other mangoes. Red, the red most red common mangoes. here are red mangoes. Yeah. But, but the green the mangoes base, are sour. Well, well, the green ones, they're not actually called... Well, that's a whole other thing. Let's just but try this anyways, stuff. Let's just Cheers. Hang Cheers. On. And I find this mango soda, it's from Wailua in, in Hawaii. It's really light. It's not as sweet as a normal soda. Uh, it's so it's okay. got a hint yeah. of mango. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. it's not overwhelmingly mango. Out. And I consider myself a mango aficionado. Absolutely. Yeah. We do have a couple Japanese mango sodas in our store that I find to be a little bit nicer. Okay, we're going to put... All right, so now we've tried... <clears throat> Wailua's Mango Natural Soda. All right. All right, we want to go weird and go with the celery? Yeah. Okay, okay so I pointed out on the way in, I, I said, dude, celery? But you said this is one of your favorites. It's one of my favorites because weird. it's very light and refreshing. Um, we also have a cucumber soda. And these two, when it's hot outside, I don't think there's a better soda to refresh you. Um, Wait, hang on. Wait. Yeah. Yeah, that's just weird. I'm going to try this. It straight up smells like just a stock of celery. Yeah, that's weird. I'll take the not butter beer better. After back. you mow, this is like my after mowing drink right here. So we're trying these and they're warm. Is that mm -hmm. normal? Um, I <laughs> actually think the flavor is more distinct when they're warm, but most people are going to try them cold. Well, I think you get kind of used yeah. to that, maybe. I mean, there's like certain types Ooh. of beer and stuff. What's what's next? Watermelon cream agave. That sounds what, like what is the jam. agave part of this? So what is the difference? Um, Ugave is a brand out of Colorado, and they sweeten it wow, with that was loud. Yeah. agave it's nectar. It's got the punch to it. With and, agave nectar? And so it's less sugar. It's a, uh, All of their bottles oh, are only 100 with... calories. Nice. So it's not as sweet and you... This smells good. I'm going to have to walk like seven miles tonight after I drink all this sugar. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's okay. This is all keto-friendly, by the way. So they make... Uh, it's definitely not... <laughs> they make about ten varieties. Oh, that's pretty good. I like the watermelon cream. Yum. That's way better than the celery. Okay, this is maybe the winner for me so far. I don't that's know. That's four. The not butter beer was pretty good. Yeah, I'm not like I've never been like a butterscotchy kind of guy. <laughs> the not butter beer. Yeah, the <laughs> it's it's strong. <laughs> He's over here like, please don't say that. We He's have not the maker of it. That's yeah. why we have a thousand varieties of the shop because some people come in and I say, well, what do you like? Like what kind of so fruit so if one flavors? one of them gets sued okay. for trademark infringement, exactly. you have other other we have things. backups. No, that wasn't as loud as the last oh, one. What's this? The this one has like stuff Honey in the bottom. Basil. This is a natural soda from South Carolina. Should I have shake, shaken this one? Oh, up, you maybe? can swirl it around a little bit. Yeah, I so failed. They are anything that's natural is going to have some natural settling. Yeah. I okay. That I, well. Is this ginger something? No, Honey it's basil. not. It's Honey basil. Honey basil. Honey and yeah, basil. Yeah. Cannon Burrow. Crap. Ooh, that smells funky. Yeah. It smells funky, funky. Can you? I hope everybody can smell that. And a I'm lot not, of people. <laughs> woo, here, listeners, funky, smell funky. this. Cannon Burrow is great. Uh, all their sodas are fresh fruit pressed. Um, Ooh, they're great. That's as, got some flavor. They're great as mixers as well because you mix alcohol. Oh yeah, that'd be good with some vodka. You got some vodka? I like some gin with it to be honest. Yeah. With you on this one. <laughs> Some gin and juice. But Watson's not allowed to drink in, on the podcast. <laughs> Why? It's more entertaining. <laughs> For the by the time this comes out, if you listen to the uh, food truck episode, you know why. <laughs> and so, Cannon Burrow out of South Carolina, they they make uh, all their stuffs fresh. Um, and I love how he provides all the color well. commentary while we just drink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just drink. Just we're just on the sideline. Right. The, the <laughs> funny thing is, is I, I kind of forgot that we were recording something here. Thank you, Luke. Thank yeah. you for keeping the show going. I'm just going. trying to keep us on track. No, that's you, you were doing it. So Okay, oh, okay hang on. we got to go back to the not butter beer. Uh, well, hang on, hang on. So, so i got to clean my palate. There's five here. So okay. we've, had, we've had honey basil, mango, not butter beer, <laughs> celery, and ugave watermelon cream. That was pretty good. Someone's not making the cut. Oh, I got to go with the celery or the honey basil. They're I'm, out. I'm going with celery. That's out. And, 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 as I forget, I'm on a podcast. We'll also remove. All right, we want to take it down to three. Okay. So we're going to go with ugave. The watermelon cream, yeah. 
Watermelon. Hope everybody can see this. Not butter beer. Yeah, the not butter beer has made it. Good. You have advanced. The mango was just okay. And I mean, it's yeah, third but place. It's, I liked it more than the celery or yeah, the honey it's third basil. Place. So it's still well second I, loser. Well, we'll get back into that. So we'll give this a okay. rest because man, that it's also this stuff's filling. Yeah. I mean, it's like substantial. Now, one thing I noticed about all of these is none of them felt overpoweringly like sugary. It right. wasn't, and and none of them are like. Rem- really carbonated right they're clearly carbonated but it's not like i don't know one it's of not going to punch you in the face with carbonation one right. of them uh definitely had more carbonation in it when i opened it than the others but so luca out of these five would you have chosen the three that we chose or would you have gone a different route out of those five the watermelon cream is probably my favorite to oh, drink yeah. on a day-to-day it's pretty okay. good uh, for multiple reasons. I like to drink some of the sodas that have less sugar yeah. nowadays. No, I like that one. Because I drink so much soda, I like to <laughs> try and limit my sugar intake as much as possible. Do you have to run like 50 miles a day just to be able to keep the job that you no, have? No, uh, I'm not an exercise type person. I, I get enough exercise just moving boxes around from store to store and from the warehouse that I think it offsets you should, it. You should do what I do. You get up every morning and jog your memory. <laughs> Oh, another life hack from Master yeah. Watson. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. So before we we move the tournament forward, um, all right. So, <laughs> as far as like the growth of your company, and I mean, it, it, are you franchising your model? Are you wanting to open more locations? Because I mean, what's what's your plan with this? Where's this going? I have no desire to franchise at all. Um, I started with one location in Lawrence, Kansas, um, and it was job. called Mass Street Soda. And yeah, that I saw that on there. That one's five years old now. Is um, it still there? It is still there. Yeah, we just renovated the store to turn it into more of a soda bar. So you can go and make a float. You can add ice cream to anything. Oh, now can you we're add vodka talking. to it too? Yeah. What's that? Is it a bar too? We don't have any oh. alcohol. Our niche is non-alcohol. All right, all right. Yeah. Okay. We wanna, but we got ice cream. We want to stay as family-friendly as possible. All right. There's a million places to go and drink alcohol All we right. want to be on like, mass street yeah. on, on, on mass, mass street, street yeah. for sure yeah. yeah yeah and so then when we opened kc soda we actually opened at the legends first in 2015 and, okay and for those of you outside of kansas city the legends is an area that is near some popular big attractions there's a, a nascar track out there and also the sporting it's like an outdoor yeah. mall yeah and there's a lot of shopping restaurants other stuff out there some uh, it, is that where the outlet? There's like it's outlet, an outlet, yeah. outdoor mall, and then yeah. a lot of other businesses like, like restaurants right. that aren't yeah. necessarily like mega box. Right. And so, so did you guys move? We moved that store to the city market after three and a half years. Ah. The problem. So with, you're not at Legends. We're not at the Legends city market. anymore. Okay. Uh, the problem with the Legends was that it was too full of corporate stores. Sure. And so we didn't have kind of the local business feel that mm. Mass Street or City Market City Market, Market did that for you. Absolutely. Okay. Did that did that improve business? It did. Um, did it improve sanity? It improved it did improve business and sanity as mm. well. So no man win. The the problem with the legends as well was our winters were awful. Oh like we I just bet. did not have the sales in the winter to I mean we we weren't losing money, but we weren't making money for six months out of the year. That's you would, still you would have to money, yeah. you would have to ride the business of the summer for those six months when it's not the greatest weather in Kansas. So, um, Matt, do you know that my family has a significant history in the ice cream business? Yes, I okay, do. So, my family's been in Kansas City for like ever. Uh, my mom's like great great grandfather was the sheriff of Westport at one point, like been around. But my dad's side um, owned De Corsi Milk and Ice Cream. And until the early 60s, it was everywhere, everywhere. So they, we have old signs that, you know, talk about, have soda fountain drinks and different right. stuff like that. And, and it's a challenging business. So like they'll refer to ice cream uh, places as a dip shop. Ah. And much like in, now in the winter, uh, people don't eat as much ice cream. Nope. So, you know, they, they had other things. They did all dairy. Now, they weren't dairy farmers. They were processing it, creating the ice cream, bottling the milk, doing stuff like that. Um, so do you diversify like now people drink milk all year round, right? People use butter all year round and stuff like that. So, um, if it, is the winter, why, why would I, I, obviously the heat makes you thirstier, but people don't stop drinking soda in the winter. What was it? Was it just the foot traffic at legends that cut, that cut down in the exactly. winter? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. A lot of our businesses walk by traffic. So people just walking by, see us 
hey, it's warm outside. I'm gotcha. going to grab a, a cold soda. And then yeah, they come well, back I, as repeat customers. And ice like, cream's the same way. It's like, yeah. oh, you're there. And like, here it is. And let's, you know, eat the ice cream. But you're not really doing that. And, and so. Know. I'm always looking for ice cream. So, I get it. And in yeah, Kansas so winter, it's zero degrees outside. I'm not going to walk around an outdoor mall. True. And, um, you know find this Casey soda place. So, so do you sell more stuff at the shop other than soda? We sell merchandise. Just um, like shirts and shirts, stuff? pint glasses, okay. um, stickers, your usual merchandise fair. We get a fair amount of tourists at City Market and that seems to be very popular. Um, any of the merchandise, we price it. When very, is the City Market like the market market part of it open? It's the city market is open seven days a week, 363 oh. days a year. Oh, okay. And then in the middle of the Just market. Just like a certain time of day? We're open, up, like we're open. Not you, but I mean like the yeah, market part. The market part, um, there's produce vendors open every day. Oh, okay. So in the middle of the market is where the weekend traffic is. So that's when you get the out-of-town farmers that come in and sell their stuff. Uh, but there are produce vendors there open every single I day. I didn't know that. I've honestly yeah. never been there and i've lived that my whole life and they've actually added heaters to the city market where they close the doors so it's nice temperature year-round to shop all those places cool very cool it's time for the next round so is your Some, no it's time for the next round man we're gonna someone's going down oh you ready oh what do you want to start with we're starting with watermelon cream this oh, time okay. we're down to three right, we're down to right, watermelon right. cream non-butterscotch beer by, La- by, <laughs> by Larry <Non-butters>. Warder. <laughs> okay, back to the watermelon Hang cream. On. All right, all right. Hold on. Hold. Cheers. Die guy. <sighs> yeah, I still, I good. do still like it. I like pretty that good. a lot. That's, that's good. watermelon cream ugave. It's also organic. All right, mango's third place. We don't waste our time with no, it. No, we're going to try mango oh, okay, again. all right. But you know what? That's too similar. We have to mix the palate okay, up a little bit. Fine. You're going with the non-butter beer. Yeah, the and I will say you guys are mixing soda in the same glass. So I'm I, not, I, I've, con- I've considered that. It's a little tainted. Yeah. It's okay. We're willing to take the chance. Now, is this the right type of glass based on the type of soda? Or is it kind of like <laughs> wine where you have like different types of... <laughs> For sampling, we tend to do... We have little <laughs> shot glasses. Um, is this like Ghostbusters yeah. crossing streams? Yeah. I mean, is this dangerous? It is. Are we... <laughs> You're just getting so much oh. contamination, I don't know if you're getting the real taste. The not butter beer is pretty good. Oh, dude, all right. But I'm telling you, that watermelon cream might have crushed it. The not butter beer with ice cream okay, is fantastic. So here in round two, the non butter scotch beer by Mary Water <laughs> is, <laughs> is... It's not uh, as good. Is, uh, or is it Mary Water? All I'm, right. I'm declaring a winner. It's clearly, uh, it's clearly a ripoff of Harry Potter. Can I say that? <laughs> Dear Warner Brothers. Dear Warner Brothers. Is that who owns it? Does J.K. Rowling? Nah, JK, no, it, look, Miss Rowling, if you were listening to this episode of Startup Hustle, I would love for you to come try butterscotch beer. I think you'll love it. And you won't want to sue the maker. All right, we're going to try the maker. Which is not the KC Soda Company anyway. It is, yeah, <laughs> as a disclaimer. <laughs> All right, so this is the, this is the Waialua Mango. Pretty damn good too. That's All right, what are we going to eliminate? I'm telling you, we got to bring watermelon the cream is the clear, clear winner here. So w- we have to eliminate one. This is like Highlander. This I already made an executive one. decision. Is to get rid of mango? Yeah, I doubt. dude, you're not. You they're not going to let you in the Philippines again. What are you going to do? <sighs> They'll All let right, me back. We'll come back to the who the champion is. All okay, right. so I've learned in the maybe the only thing I've learned in the last ten years is that there's no such thing as software without bugs, and there's no such thing as a business without problems. What kind of problems do you run into? What do you have to overcome as someone that owns a soda shop? I mean, obviously you can always, in, in any merchandise <coughs> type business, you can, that happened, that's because you you swore off the mango of that. <laughs> yeah, it's immediately coming back ah, to hunt come you. on. So, you know, like obviously other than getting stuck with inventory, like what's, what are, what are the challenges you have to overcome? Sourcing the inventory is actually a huge really? problem. It's not I mean, like, like a like, kind of, uh, Catalog and figuring out where to buy it, or you have to time the market basically. Weird, because some of the Why? sometimes these bottlers will only produce it at certain mm. times of the year, and then you have to find a shipper to bring it. One, you've got to buy enough quantity to make it worth the freight to bring oh, it. Oh yeah, to freight. So say I have John come into the store and he drinks that watermelon cream and he loves it and he buys all I have, and that happened to be the last case that I had in the warehouse. 
and he's mad at me now because he's like, hey, I want to buy that watermelon cream. I'm like, I got to wait until I'm out of all the agave before I buy another pallet from Colorado. Um, and so imagine that, but I've got, I bring in 1,800 varieties. So I have people that buy something and then they're upset when I can't get it back for six months or so. Can, can I buy the, uh, a lot of this stuff at CaseySoda.com? We don't have any online store okay. right now. Our biggest issue and why we haven't developed an online store is I run through it so quick in the retail side that I don't have. You don't have certain things that you always have, like staples? We've got maybe 300 varieties that we always have. What's the How many different varieties do you have in your store? In the store at any given time, there's 900 to 1,000. How big oh is your store? Uh, the Kansas City store is 700 square feet. That's Which still not. Tiny. I was gonna say for nine hundred types, a lot then, of flavors. And then the the Lawrence store is twice the size. It's fourteen hundred square okay. feet. That's so they a have lot of flavors, variety. man. And once again, for those of you listening in Kansas City, go down to the city market and try one of the two finalists or any of the other eight hundred flavors that might be in stock. And if I could give I, any advice, it'd be at least to have like twenty or thirty flavors or something like that. that you always have, and they're staples. You know. We keep about 300 staples, okay. yeah. what, especially the best sellers. What is what are a few of those? Uh, that butterscotch beer right there mm. is, is our number two. You seller. just tainted the result. Yeah. See now that I know it's popular. Yeah. I mean, so really you never run, run out of that one. I do run out of it, but it's one that I can get. It. I mean, when I sell enough of it, I'm going to bring in pallets of it, so right. I have pallets. So I'm just curious. So how much of this do people buy? Like how many, so you, do I have to buy a six pack, four pack? Our store is mix and match. You can buy one. Oh, so I can go in and I can buy, I can literally get one of each flavor. Yeah, I we like give, uh, the way our pricing works is uh, 99% of our sodas are 225 Okay. And then the more you buy, the cheaper it gets. So you get discounts as you mix and match six, 12, or 24 bottles. Gotcha. So that way it incentivizes people to buy more. Um, and then it gives them a price break. And then if they find a favorite... They just pre-order a case and we bring it in and they pick it up. I once may or may not have frequented a liquor store that was like that. You could go in, you could, you know, it had just had a ton of craft beers and you could, you know, you could literally that's build. That's fun. Yeah, well, no, because I mean, I mean where we got if you wanted idea. to try different stuff. Yeah. Like and this I has been fun. We have five is. random flavors. Yeah, but there will be only one winner, which will likely be something that will immediately sell out due to the amazing reach we have and i feel like people trust my palate i think that guy from russia is going to order all of these <laughs> we haven't heard from him for no a while. And by the way edward why aren't you updating us about the chickens man he's too busy oh it's yeah chicken, the chicken, the chicken, chicken hustle season. either that or he quit listening edward come back man we want to hear about the chicken hustle all right are we going to play a game Oh, uh, yeah. We're going to play mixtape, right. except for we're going to play for the ultimate prize today. Oh. The right to pick the winner. Oh, okay. Of the soda contest. Unless Luke wins, and then we'll let him fire the money again. I'm in for that. Yeah. And maybe pick the winner. Who knows? You just never know. This is really easy. All right, have you played mixtape before? I have not played mixtape before. All right. Before. So I draw a card. Mixtapethegame.com. Check it out. Um, I'm going to read a scenario. We're all going to pick a song that best fits it, and we vote. You cannot vote for yourself. Road Trip to Vegas song. It's all of it. Mm. Wow. The Road Trip to Vegas song. Viva Las no. Vegas. Oh, yep, you're going with Viva Las Vegas. It's too obvious, I think. <clears throat> I'm going to go with uh, <clears throat> Katy Perry's Friday Night. Week. Man, I'm stumped. You can always use... Uh, Fuck you by CeeLo Green. That's, that's a like, good one. That that's the hack. Yeah. It's yeah. the hack. But, yeah. but it's, yeah, I, I won't be able to vote for it. I have to be up front. I feel like a Kanye song is always a great one for Vegas because he just kind of loosens you up. Um, Kanye West? Kanye West. Yeah, like, oh, she's a gold digger. That's actually a great one. <laughs> yeah. Because it prevents you, maybe it prevents you We're from just, like finding certain people. I, in is Vegas. that perfect for Vegas? Yeah, no, but I'm, I'm, gonna gold, yeah. I'm gonna do Gold Digger by Kanye because all right, it's putting you, you guys in the right are giving me like the wor- like I can't. I, I want to vote for myself right now more so than I've ever wanted. Yeah, I want to break Digger the rules of mixtape. I'm Can gonna I, vote for him. I'm gonna vote for him because I can't vote for Katy Perry. <laughs> all right, you won. All right. Congratulations. Now you have to sing it. Okay. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna. We'll give you a choice. I'm a little worried about that. One. Oh, you can, she's a gold You can digger. fire the money gun, or you can pick the winner of the soda competition. Um, I want to fire the money. <laughs> gun. I, as, as I'm already preparing the video <laughs> for that, so 
All right, congratulations for being the mixtape winner. Let's see if All the right. money gun actually works. Are you ready? Oh, yeah, bring it on. <laughs> oh, there oh. it goes. Oh, beautiful. It awesome. never works the first time. Congratulations. You just got to shake it up a little bit. That's like, exa- just like soda pop. That's right. Yeah. That's recommended. So first you buy soda, then you shake it up. So who's going to pick the winner of our soda here? I'm going with the butterscotch beer one. I'm going with the watermelon cream. Really, dude? Yeah. Oh, man. So I'll tell you what. I think what needs to occur is the listeners here in Kansas City need to go down to Luke's shop, buy some of each of these, and prove that I'm right. Have their own Pepsi challenge? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. will warn you, the watermelon <laughs> cream sells out more because there you go. I Boom. just don't have enough. Dude, this is number stock. two. This is number two. What's number one? Number one is a soda called Lenonade, which looks like it's communist. Uh, it has a hammer and sickle on the front, and then it has a bunch of Russian quips Dude, on the side. D- that's our is, listener. Do people just buy it because the bottle's weird? Or yeah, what? and it tastes good, too. Okay. It, it says on the box, it says a taste worth standing in line for. Is It's kind of tagline. Interesting. Interesting. Because huh. it's a Soviet, like you had to used to stand in yeah. line to, to so, buy your food. This is good. That's pretty tasty. This is good. It's okay. great butter beer. Okay, so back to the business of the soda business. Um, how much of the, how many bottles of soda have you broken um, in the I, history? I of break this? way more than customers do. Customers always come in with kids and they're worried. Like their kids yeah. are just gonna. I would not let my. I would not let my kids. The amount of soda that kids have broken is so minimal. Like it's not even a worry of me when a kid comes in. I break, I don't know, a couple bottles a week. Nothing wow. crazy. So, yeah. so speaking Usually of bringing, it's like a bad box where the bottom comes out and they just oh, fall yeah, out yeah. like torpedoes. Totally. Well, I'm sure they get broken in uh, transit, too. And they you do. got like cardboard so, boxes that are all wet. Yep. And, so if I came down tonight to the KC Soda Company at the city market and I brought my kids, is there cold soda or is there a soda bar? Or mm-hmm. You said that's only in Lawrence. The soda bar is only in Lawrence, but we have a device in the store where you can pick anything off the shelf and it takes three minutes. To make it cold. Ah. So. Now that solves it, bro. We have a cooler that has all the best sellers. Like, that's in the cooler. Okay, okay. The butterscotch beer is in the cooler. Um, But the energy it takes to cool a thousand different sodas was not worth the the electricity bill. Yeah, that makes sense. If you can cool it in three minutes, that's not bad. Yep. We might have to do a supplemental issue where we... We're doing a filter? Where we don't mix it with liquor, but maybe we did. Are we allowed? To, are we allowed to do that on air? I don't even know what the rules are. I feel like we we have towed the line with several trademark infringements today, but probably not. So, okay. So, Luke, what are some of your four goals with this? I mean, I know we were talking about that earlier. I mean, like as, you've got you two just, stores. You just cool with the store being where you're at and driving more business through. It, I'm or? great with two stores. I'm looking at maybe every one to two years expansion in the Midwest. Um, I've looked at different. Places, Des Moines, Springfield, St. Louis, do, Wichita. Do you, do you do stuff? Do you do any, like, road stuff? Meaning, like, you mentioned, you were talking about, you were talking about something like that before we even started. Right. Right. So I, I take road trips where basically I go and find small sodas that I've never seen before or that are, they won't sell to me. Because sometimes a, a company is just not big enough to supply me. And so I so was... So you literally hit the road to get... Hit the road, yeah. Man, this guy's dedicated. Yeah. I also, it's kind of like a vacation. You know, we'll take a car and just see a couple new places. But I was down in Mobile, Alabama, where um, there's a place called Big Jerk Soda that's based in Pensacola, Florida, which is, you know, 30 miles away. And they only sell in 20 different stores down there. Um, so we met with the owner down there. He was a uh, chef who decided to open up a soda company. And again, like the honey basil, he has a lot of unique fresh fruit sodas. Um, so he had a Thai hot pineapple basil soda that was really oh, wow. good. And then a pineapple upside down cake that was really unique. That sounds good. But all of his sodas weren't pasteurized, and so they had to be kept cold, which is oh. a problem when trying to ship out of state. Hmm. So, all right, so you get to pick three sodas. You you have, without a doubt, tried more soda than anybody I've ever met. Yes. If I you have. hadn't, I would be alarmed. Yeah. Um, I mean, so what's your big three? It changes often, uh, depending with the weather, because in the wintertime, I'm going to drink darker sodas, just because they're heavier. You don't want to drink a, a Dr. Pepper in the middle of summer, because it's so hot and, and thick. 
Um, I like cucumber soda. There's one called Mr. So, Q. So I think that would be good. I find cucumber to be refreshing. I thought the celery stuff uh, felt close, but I'm not a big fan of celery. And then there's a cherry soda um, from Ooh, a place called yeah. Wisco Pop in Wisconsin okay. that is also a, like an all-natural soda. And they add vanilla and cinnamon, so it tastes like a cherry pie, basically. I'm in. And then adding ice Sounds cream good. to it, like, adds another element. Uh, it's like dude, why don't we have an pie ice, cream ice cream cooler here? You, you, why isn't there one it's on, on your, your tour bus? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, why aren't we recording on this? You're just not allowed on the tour bus. I have all these things. You know what? I'll just stay outside. I do need some wait. more butterbeer, though. No, I drank it all. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> this is, for those of you listening, Fine. notice the empty bottle. Yeah. What am I gonna do? All right, was that was that three? That was two. Yeah, what's the third? Um, it's actually it's not sold in the United States, but Ooh. it's called Fanta Shokata. It's a lemon elderflower soda sold in Eastern Europe. Wow. Yeah. So how did you even know that one exists? Um, I had had it before, and again, I'm a soda nerd, so I just know about worldwide soda. But my wife and I were in Bosnia this year, and we. Just drank it nonstop. He, he went there just to try it. Just yeah, to, I probably, just went yeah. there. Just He's to like, try "Honey, it. we're going on vacation. Where are we going? We're going to Bosnia." Yeah. And after a lot of tears. Yeah, you know, <laughs> Bosnia was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, it's actually nice there. Hopefully, you went. You say you went in the summer. We went the spring, so yeah. it was perfect. It, it wasn't was cold. Spring, yeah. I was in Belarus in December because everyone's like, "You, if you ever go to Belarus, you should go in December." I said no one. It was cold. Yeah. Really cold. Really cold. It was, uh, yeah. I I, sh- I bet they have some soda there that they don't bring other places. <laughs> um, okay, so for those of you listening, once again, check out caseysoda.com. Uh, w- you're on the social medias. We are. Yeah, Facebook, Instagram. Do we just search uh, Casey Soda? Casey Soda. Okay. Yeah. Are you on the gram? We are on the gram. We'll we'll follow you so yep. you can find a way to do that. Both Casey Soda and Mass Street Soda. Okay, and that's in Lawrence, Kansas, Rock Lawrence, Chalk Kansas. Jayhawks. Absolutely. That's right, one of the many colleges that I dropped out of. <laughs> woo <Woo-hoo! laughs> <laughs> Hey, I'm really owning that. Um, so, you know, you got any comments here, man? Are you just like, Watson, you got the itis over there. I might be in like, sugar overload. I know, I, I look honest. over and just like, Ugh. I think I drank like two bottles of soda. This, is, this has been a lot. This has been a lot, but, you know, so... I, I think we should. I kind of want to go see the store. I can. I just imagine walking in and there just be bottles every damn where. Well, what That's else what do you I think is going to? Yeah, what is basically what bottles on bottles on bottles and bottles. bottles and then a money gun and like all the craziness that happens. Yeah. Where the money is that? How you're going to pay? <laughs> Dude, this yeah. is this guy will walk up to the counter and he's just going to be like. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think you should probably fill it with more than ones if you're. Maybe gonna there's do a it, disco so. ball and some lights. Yeah. Um, so, is there the anything cool coming up? Any place where we can find you coming up soon? Um, we are still working on our soda line. We have eight flavors that we've completed. Wow. Um, When's that coming out? You know, it's kind of tough. I've got to get through the summertime. So it's uh, coming out sometime. It's gonna. We're looking for the fall. It's um, a summer time. Summer time. Release schedule. Yeah. You like what I did there? There's a little wordplay, Matt. All right. Yeah. So, but and so you said coming out with eight different types. Right. We've got eight different flavors. We're still working on kind of fine tuning those flavors. And the design, the design of the label is actually a big reason why people will buy a soda. So I've got to make sure that the design is. This, on point. Are we going to have a startup hustle brand? Ooh. Ooh. I think we should have our own brand of soda. You could. I think we should. You know. Uh, Just we're, private label some. Yeah, there we go. I can only ma- I bet that's affordable. Not. We all, as as he Redwood said we can have our own our own type of wing sauce. Oh, yes. And then we're going to yes. drink our soda with it. Yes. We're going to probably do a live event around it. And that's what we need next time we do a live Still podcast. Still waiting for my smoothie machine. Soda. From what? From Thirsty Coconut. I uh, want a smoothie machine. No, it's not a smoothie machine, dude. It's going to be it's a slushy machine. A slushy machine. Yeah. So Well, Luke, thanks for coming in for those of you that have been listening, go to caseysoda.com. Um, remember, go down to his shop, get some of the butterscotch beer, get some of the, say it again, watermelon, watermelon cream. Ugati. We want to hear from you guys online which one you like the best. Prove me right. Prove Watson wrong. Watermelon cream, baby. Which is always-